Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. My name is Clayton Chastain, your host for today's episode. Today we have with us Dr. Mark Knauer, a professor in genetics and production swine management at North Carolina State University. So Dr. Knauer, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? Hi, Clayton. Uh, pleasure to be here with you all today. I grew up in southern Wisconsin on a small 50 sow pure line operation and went to Iowa State for a couple of degrees and finished up at NC State. Uh, went to a short postdoc in the Netherlands and then a year at National Pork Board. And then I've been out here at NC State for 11 years now, which which seems hard to believe. So, Yeah, <laughs> time can fly a lot. So I saw that you recently presented a study on the impacts of different pre-weaning factors on nursery performance. Can you mind telling us a little bit about that study? Yeah. So if you if you went and asked 10 people which is more important, weaning age or weaning weight in relation to nursery throughput, you might get different answers from different people. And that's just what I saw. I asked some experts here wandering around the halls. We've got a pretty good swine team here. And I got different answers. Some people thought weaning age and some people thought weaning weight. So I had this uh, nice uh, nursery data that we did some trials with and we had individual pig weights. And so we could not only look at uh, weaning age and weaning weight, but we could also look at variation and, and see how that impacted it, everything. And so our, uh, our data we had, we had 320 litters of pigs. Litter was the experimental unit, not pig. I think litter is appropriate experimental unit for what we looked at. You could also use uh, farrowing batch. If you were a large commercial production system, uh, can consider the batch as the experimental unit. Uh, the health was per stable, so health of the pigs was average. And then um, we got individual birth weights uh, and individual weaning weights. And then the pigs went to an on-site nursery. In the nursery, the first week, the pigs got electrolytes. And an interesting caveat with this study was we have controllers there, but the farm staff is not super well seasoned in how well they can run the controllers, yet nursery survival was 98.7%. So I'm not sure what, what that tells us. But the interesting thing about this data set is we're not pushed in our, we have excess farrowing capacity, unlike quite a few other farms. And so within this study, we have a very large age range of weaning ages from like 18 to like 35 days of age. And with that, a very large range of weaning weights too. So, and most of those would be some batches were, were younger than others at weaning. And so we have quite a bit of variation, which I think makes for interesting study. So average weaning age in the study was 28 days with a standard deviation of about five. And as I said, average nursery survival was 98.7%. Uh, Traits we looked at, we looked at gender, litter size, average piglet birth weight, variation in piglet birth weight, weaning weight, variation in weaning weight, and weaning age. And so looking at correlations with nursery growth, gender, litter size, uh, variation in birth weight, variation in weaning weight, very low or no correlation with nursery growth, uh, birth weight, a, a small correlation with nursery growth, but then weaning age and weaning weight had very large correlations with nursery growth, indicating that, and this kind of makes sense, right? A bigger, older pig is going to eat more in the nursery. So if we looked at uh, all those factors that happened before that pig got to the nursery, 80% of the variation was explained in nursery growth before that pig got to the nursery. So if you think in terms of if you're running a nutrition trial, if this data holds true for other production systems, you're fighting for 20% of the variation if you're looking to improve nursery growth in a good or average health situation. 70% of the variation in nursery growth was explained by weaning weight and weaning age. And as we said, again, bigger, older pigs eat more. And so... If you think in terms of looking at nursery growth, it's probably not super necessary to do a whole lot of nursery trials to try to improve nursery growth under a high health or average health situation. Now, if you want to look to try to improve mortality or improve feed costs, I think that makes sense. But in terms of nursery growth, a lot of that is already decided before that pig gets to the nursery. 
Uh, nursery survival was a different story, and part of that might be related to the piglet survival. Uh, survival in the nursery was quite high at 98.7%. But nursery survival, our models only explained 4% of the variation versus we were able to explain 80% of the variation in growth. And the 4% of variation in nursery survival was explained by piglet birth weight, with a larger piglet birth weight being associated with greater, greater piglet uh, nursery survival. Uh, and then we came up with a trait in terms of, we called it full value pigs, pigs that weighed 30 pounds or more at nursery exit. And we just kind of pulled 30 out of air as a guesstimate. And this is just basically a composite of nursery growth and nursery mortality. And 36% uh, of the, 36 of the variation in uh, full value pigs at nursery exit was explained by weaning weight. So in this study, weaning weight did come out a little bit ahead of weaning age, but even within the batches, it went back and forth a little bit. So they're, they're both important, right? So I think that's important to know. So kind of in summary, nursery average daily gain, 80% of the variation was explained before those pigs got to the nursery, indicating that you know, we probably, if you're doing research trials to try to improve nursery growth in a average or good health situation, you're fighting for 20% of the variation. That's that's not a whole lot to, to get after. A nursery growth is kind of important to point out is kind of a double-edged sword. I mean, we want pigs to grow some in the nursery, but a larger pig at the end of nursery is going to have poor feed conversion in the finisher because it has more maintenance costs. It has a different growth curve. And so I uh, always need to keep that in the back of the mind. Nursery growth is kind of a little bit of a double-edged sword. So. so overall, I'm sure like most of those correlations and impacts you were kind of expecting to some degree, but were there any that like stood out to you that had a larger impact than you expected? Yeah, I mean, for weaning age and weaning weight, to explain 70% of the variation in nursery growth. It's, it's somewhat intuitive because a bigger, older pig is going to eat more, but that that's a lot of the variation, you know? So, and we know maternal effects, the, the sow's impact on that pig. Uh, she has a high impact, obviously, in lactation and a fairly high impact on that pig in the nursery. And then that kind of, as the pig's genes take over in the finishing period, the sow doesn't have as large effect in, in the finishing period, but that much variation in nursery growth explained by weaning weight and weaning age, that, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And the second question I had for you, so I think studies like this are good when you're trying to decide how to genetically select um, for geneticists especially. So what all do you think this tells us about how we should be selecting for pigs right now as an industry? Do you think we're doing a pretty good job and we're kind of like hitting the nail on the head and selecting for all the right parameters? Or do you think some might need a little more attention? Well, a lot of things cycle in the pig industry. And if you looked 40, 50 years ago, we established that you could select for uh, larger weaning weights through genetics. And we kind of ignored that for at least in some of the large companies for a chunk of time. And uh, some of the genetic companies have chased birth weight and birth weight is a piece of the puzzle, but there's more to nursery throughput than just birth weight. There's colostrum production, there's litter growth, there's number of functional teeth. And so I think the pigs, I think the geneticists are, will come towards a more balanced selection of not focusing just on, uh, piglet birth weight, but also getting, trying to get after some of these colostrum pieces, some of these litter growth pieces, number of functional teats to help improve nursery throughput. So I think they'll move towards a more balanced approach. Gotcha. Um, well, I think that's all we have time for. And thank you a bunch for coming on the show and sharing this study with us. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And we are constantly on the lookout for the latest updates in swine nutrition. And if you have a swine nutrition-related research trial that you would be able to share on our podcast, please send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com, and we would love to talk about your research. See you later.